Just take your time, honestly. I, I understand why there is this big push to get them done as soon as you can, because life just isn't very fun when you're studying, and especially when you're also working, and you just want to get over it as soon as you can. And I studied for a year and a half. It wasn't fun. There were times where I wanted to quit, and that I w there were times where I was miserable, or I just wanted to take a break. And when that happened, I did. I took a break. I Okay, thanks, Eliana, for connecting with me. I know we connected over LinkedIn because I saw that you had recently just been awarded the Elijah Watt Sales Award, which is a very prestigious award. And I'm so excited for us to be chatting today to hear a little bit about your studying and how you studied to get such high scores on the CPA exam. I guess before we get started, I'd like you to just go ahead and give the viewers a little bit of background about yourself, maybe where you went to school, how you chose accounting as a major, and what you currently do now. Yeah, sure. So I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland, and I knew that I was going to go to University of Maryland since I was in middle school. It was just kind of what everyone was trying to get into when I grew up in that area. So I was really happy when I got accepted into the school and I immediately enrolled in the criminology and criminal justice program because at the time my heart was set on working in law enforcement. Okay. And so throughout college, as I learned more about the criminal justice system in America, and I interned at the Public Defender Service in D.C. and a few other places, I my interest sort of transitioned to a bigger focus on white collar investigations. Mm -hmm. And in my senior year, I learned about forensic accounting okay. as a possible like pivot in my career focus. So I joined the Plus One program at UMD, which it basically just meant that I could start taking classes and earning credit towards a master's in this case, a master's in accounting, while I was finishing up my undergraduate degree. Yeah. Um, and so when I finished my undergrad degree that summer, I had taken two accounting classes towards my master's at that point, mm -hmm. and I had gotten an internship with EY, and I interned with them. I finished my master's, and mm -hmm. I got a full-time offer, and I have been working there ever since. I know a lot of people study um accounting and don't pursue the cpn it's so it's remarkable that you actually did accounting as your master's program so at what point did you decide you wanted to pursue the the cpa um it was definitely once i decided that i was going to get my master's in accounting mm -hmm. once i made that decision and made that pivot in my education it wasn't really an active decision after that to go and and get the cpa i i never really thought about not pursuing it it just okay. seemed like the next automatic step after the masters yeah that makes sense i would like to think a lot of people would view it as the next automatic step right because like i would think like once you have a degree in accounting either bachelor's or master's like the next step should be to get the cpa but we still see like a lot of we see a lot of dwindling pipeline like people don't pursue the cpa after because of how challenging or hard it is so i'm glad that you did it and you're here today with such remarkable high scores maybe tell me a little bit about like how you made plans to study for the cpa or what plans you put in place once you knew you wanted to to pursue the cpa yeah honestly it didn't really change my post graduation plan all that much mm -hmm. i accepted the full-time offer at EY. And so I knew that I would have, I think it was like three or four months between graduating mm -hmm. um, with my master's degree and starting mm -hmm. full-time work. So I just figured I would try to study as much as I could within those four months. Yeah. And then I would start full-time work and continue studying for as long as it took. So you studied for three to four months before you started working full-time. Were you done with all of the sections before you started or how did that work? How did that play out for you? Mm. So I actually, it was a little complicated because mm -hmm. I wasn't able to apply to take the exams until I graduated with my master's degree, because in the state that I'm in, and in the state of Maryland, you need to mm -hmm. have a bachelor's in, in accounting or its equivalent. So like, the, like you need to have a degree in accounting. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even able to apply until after I graduated. So it, it took about those four months for my application to even be able to sit for the exams to go through. Oh, wow. Okay. So I started studying. I studied for two exams. Um, and I had studied for two exams by the time it took my application to get approved. And at that mm -hmm. point, I had also started working in EY. Mm -hmm. So I took those two exams in like September. And then I think I studied a little bit more. So like towards the end of that year, I took the first two, but I had already done the majority of the studying for them in that four year in the four month gap 
between mm -hmm. graduating and starting work. And then I would say for the most part, I studied for the next two exams while I was working full time. Oh, wow. Incredible. That's that's so good. Nice. I think when I saw like that you got the EWS award, and we'll go in a little bit more detail on what that award means and how people get it. For people who are aware of or pursuing the CPA, you know that to pass each section, you need 75, right? But getting 95 on average on all exams would get you the Elijah Wolf Sales Award, which is, I think that's incredible, incredibly high scores. And I think that getting such high scores requires, it's a, it's a combination of different factors, which I think most of which might just be studying, right? And just making sure you understand the material deeply. So from your perspective, what would you, th what do you think like were some of your good study habits that helped you get such high scores on the exam? Or what do you think, like from your perspective, why did, how did you get such high scores? So I would say that the two most important things were that I really just paced myself. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't try to rush through it. I saw the exams as a marathon and not a race. Mm -hmm. And so being able to allow myself the time to really sit down and study for it definitely helped. It helped me actually learn the material instead of just trying to do rote memorization mm -hmm. and cram it all in as fast as I could. So by the time I was ready to sit for each exam, I really did feel confident with the material. Um, it got to the point where you could open up the textbook and to any random page and just say a topic that was on that page and I could tell you all about it. Um, and then the other thing, so outside of just pacing yourself and not trying to rush through it, just taking your time, it's definitely having a routine mm -hmm. um, and a routine that isn't as strict as some people might expect. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I studied, once I started working full time, I studied for either anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours just after work. Mm -hmm. And I never studied for more than four hours over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, like some maybe a little bit longer when I started getting closer to the exam date, like the week mm -hmm. or two weeks before the exam date, I would definitely study for a little bit more than that. But for the most part, it was it was important to me that I also just had time to exist as a person because I yeah. I knew that because I was pacing myself, I'd be taking I'd be studying for these exams over the course of a year and a half. Yeah. So I wanted I didn't want to burn out. You know, I wanted to make sure that I had that time to also just be a person, exist, mm -hmm. have some hobbies. I definitely had to cut back on a lot of things, but by 8 p.m. every day I was done with work and I was done with studying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really great point to share that pacing your, because if you think about studying for the exam as a marathon, right, you don't want to like outwork yourself or like burn yourself out too early. And especially if you're studying while working full time, right, you want to be able to manage the time while working your time while studying so I think that was that's a really good important point that you shared and I know we talked a little bit about like how you started you studied for two sections before you started working and you studied for two more sections after you started working I can imagine that the way you study was probably a little bit different just in terms of like time management right so maybe you walk me through like your study routine maybe before you started working full-time and then after you started working full-time yeah sure so when I was studying I guess full-time within that four month period, I would probably study for about six to eight hours a day. Like I could, I treated it as if it were my full-time job. Mm -hmm. I'd wake up in the morning and I would just go into studying. And I, I definitely had more time to, to dedicate towards studying. So I, you know, I, I had, um, through EY, I had the Becker, I had access to the Becker study course. So, or like the review course. So I definitely did like a hundred percent of every, of every tool that they offered for the first exam. Um, mm -hmm. also because, you know, you never really know if it's the first time you're taking a test, you, you're not familiar with the structure. You don't know how difficult the questions are going to be. It's just like when you're in college, the first exam that a professor gives you, you don't know what that professor is like with their testing. Mm -hmm. So it's, for me, it's always like better be safe than sorry. Definitely better to overstudy than understudy because mm -hmm. I wanted to pass the first time around no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I got, so after I took the first exam, I was more familiar with the structure. I was more familiar with what worked for me and what didn't. And my study habits definitely evolved over time, also because I started working full time. So I had to adapt the amount of time that I was spending on studying and I was able to cut back on what I did. 
So for example, the first exam, I did 100% of all the multiple choice questions. I'd watch the lecture, I'd take notes in the lecture, and then I would do all the multiple choice questions and all the task-based task simulations immediately after each and every lecture. I went through the entire review book after the going through the textbook. I did everything. Mm -hmm. By the last exam, I didn't even watch the lectures. I just took notes on my... just. I read the textbook with myself and I took notes mm -hmm. with myself. And then I wouldn't do the multiple choice questions after each chapter. It would usually be after a unit I would do them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't use the multiple choice questions that Becker had available as a way of learning. I would do it as a way of reviewing. Okay. So by reading the textbook and then having about a week or so in between, uh, between uh, learning the material for the first time and then going through the multiple choice questions uh, it helped me just sort of review and, and have that repetition as opposed to just cramming it all immediately. Yeah. So I think that's that's a really good point to share because like you started studying one way and then as you took the exam you evolved your studying and even despite how you changing your ways of studying you still got really high scores right to, and mm -hmm. it still worked so I think it's really important that just as a as a person studying the exam just know how you study best and just change and tweak things as you go to just help you stay on track with with your exam. I think that's that's a really important point to share. Were there any signs or indicators that you like you used to assure yourself that okay, now I'm ready to sit for the exam or okay, I shouldn't be worried anymore? It was honestly for most of them it was kind of just this gut feeling. Mm -hmm. I just sort of knew okay, there's no point in really studying that much more. I I've learned all that I am going to learn. Um but on a more, I guess, technical aspect, what I would do is whenever I had a moment, if I was on the bus or on the train or in the car or just taking a walk um, or in between uh, like lunch breaks, I would take, uh, I would go into Becker on my phone or on the computer and I would generate um, like a practice test mm -hmm. of 10 to 15 questions. I would only, mm -hmm. I, I rarely went more than 15 questions at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would take the test. And once I had finished studying all the material, so I was done with the whole textbook, mm -hmm. um, if I could do random practice tests of 10 to 15 questions with those questions being taken randomly from anywhere mm -hmm. in, in the textbook material, yeah. and I could get an average of 90 or above consistently, then I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I'm, I think I'm ready for this. That's a very good indicator. I do remember taking practice. I mean, it's been a long time since I took the exam, but I do remember taking practice um, questions as well, random practice questions to just make sure that I, I felt comfortable and I felt ready. So I think that's a good tip as well. Could you tell me what order you took the exam and if there was any like rationale behind the order? Because I know a lot of people like choose to take maybe one section first because it's a mm -hmm. little bit more challenging or more voluminous. And what was your your order? Right. So the first one I took was FAR. I wanted to get it out of the way, especially mm -hmm. because I knew that I'd only have a limited amount of time where I could be studying full time. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to spend that on FAR. And I'm really happy that I did that because mm -hmm. um, FAR, I didn't actually find it the most challenging of the exams, um, but I did find that it gave me a very strong foundation going into the other three. Mm -hmm. There were definitely... Um, topics that are covered in FAR that aren't covered in the other textbooks, but that are, but, but that might be touched on on the exams or like skills that you develop or that you gain through FAR that you then have to use on the exams for the other three. And so I think it was a very good choice to take that one first. Yeah. And then second, I took audit because I was going to be working as an auditor and I just, I felt, I didn't really have much of a preference for the rest of the three. And I figured I may as well take the one that'll be applicable to my job so that I could do my job better. And then I took reg only because I thought that at the time Beck had a higher pass rate. So I figured if it's the easier exam, I'll save it for last. I don't, I don't remember my order. I think I took FAR first as well. Mm -hmm. But then I think I took RAG because I, I was going to go into tax and then I took audit and then BEC was definitely my last one. So the same thought process yeah. as me. Yeah. yeah. Do you, did you have a, a favorite exam that you sat for? Like if you look back and, and you think, oh, that was my favorite one, like either during the exam time or during the studying process, was, did you have a favorite exam that you sat for and, and why was it your favorite? So I don't know if I'd say like it was my favorite. I think it's just the one that I hated the least. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely far. Mm -hmm. I I felt that the math itself at any given topic was pretty easy. It was just having to learn and having to remember what type of math you need to do depending mm -hmm. on the question so it wasn't really like 
learning. You know, it's not rocket science. It's mm -hmm. it's pretty simple algebra for the most part. It's just sometimes the approach is different depending on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I I liked FAR. I found it more interesting. I found that the topics just covered a wider breadth of areas and I felt like I was genuinely learning when I was reading through FAR. It a lot of it wasn't new material, um, wasn't a review material for me because I had only, you know, I'd studied accounting for about a year and a half mm -hmm. um, with my master's. I didn't have a four year oh, bachelor's. That's true. That's true. Right. So yeah. for a lot of the topics that were covered in FAR, which are considered I in, I think like the bread and butter of accounting, mm -hmm. right? How to do journal entries, how to do like what is debt, what is equity, all of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. very basic topics. But for a lot of that, it's the it was the first time I was ever really encountering it. Yeah. So I felt that I definitely had more of a incentive to study and to learn it because it wasn't just I wasn't studying to take a test. I was studying to learn oh, because yeah. this is material that will be applicable throughout my entire career. Um, and then also, I think it was just the first exam that I studied for. And so I had a lot more energy. I had, you know, I was right, you know, I was like, if it's, if it's a marathon, it's the, you know, right at the beginning. So I still, I still had all that stamina by the time I was studying for it. That's, that's, and that's interesting. Cause like for me far, I, I liked far cause I majored in accounting, like undergrad. So a lot of it was like things I, I knew and I enjoyed accounting. So it was more like just a reminder of the things that I, I knew, but I also really enjoy, I enjoy studying for it because it was all the debits and the credits and the conceptual like um, background in accounting. But I, I think your perspective is also interesting because like you're saying, that was a time for you to really learn a lot of the foundation because you did accounting as a master's program. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to like your testing, testing day. So you're taking a test on exam day. What did that day look like for you? And do you have any exam testing tips that you think worked really well for you? I don't know. I, I think I'm just a good test taker. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really have any rituals or, or like routines that I would do. I, Definitely for the first two exams, I had I was said, okay, I'm not gonna do any studying the day of or the night before or like the day before the exam. I I remember for far the day before the exam, it was a Sunday. I I always tried to take them on Mondays mm -hmm. um, so that if I needed to study for an entire day, I could just do it on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And for far, I like I didn't even touch my textbook on like on that Sunday the day before. Mm -hmm. But once I started working full time, I definitely had like those mm -hmm. panic moments where I definitely was studying the entire day the day before. Um, but yeah, I like to take the exams in the morning, just kind of, you know, get through it. Yeah. Um, just wear something comfortable. I didn't wear jeans. You know, I would be sitting in that room for a while. So I don't care what I looked like. I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. get up and do my hair, or my makeup or whatever. I just rolled mm -hmm. out of bed, walked to the exam center and, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think I took mine in the morning as well to just feel like that was when I had the most energy and just to get it out of the way and, and just be done. So now let's move on to just like overall just tips and just like your thought process going into the exam. Um, I know the, C the CPA exam has a lot of like low pass rates, right? A lot of people don't pass it on their first attempt and a lot of people have to take it multiple times. Like knowing that, did that discourage you at all? Or like, how did you conquer any fear that you might have had if if you had any at all I wasn't I mean the first exam was definitely a little bit worrying because I, I just didn't know what it was going to be like but I don't know I just studied until I knew the material and then mm -hmm. once I felt confident that I knew the material I was like okay I'm ready to go take it you know yeah. I I knew that I had taken my time I knew yeah. that I hadn't rushed through things I knew that I had really learned everything and not just trying to memorize it and I wouldn't be stuck on the exam trying to be like oh what was that again trying to yeah. you know we're trying to do recall yeah yeah it wasn't I the low pass rates didn't really freak me out that much it just mm -hmm. incentivized me to study for longer yeah no I I completely agree and I echo what you you said as well because I think when I was going into the exam I just focused my, atten my attention on people who had passed the exam. Mm -hmm. And if people had passed the exam, that means it's a passable exam. And so I just needed to like study and do the work and not cut any corners. And, and so when I felt like I did enough work, I felt confident to go take the exam and it, 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 it worked out well for me. And, and so did, it did for you. So that, I think that's a good, a good tip to share. You know, with, with studying for the exam, I know you said, um, 
you managed your time appropriately, you paced yourself, and sometimes there were some sacrifices that you had to make along the way. Um, looking back, were those sacrifices worth it? And what type of sacrifices did you have to make um, to allow you to study and, and put in as, as, as much time as you needed to, to get through the exam? You know, it's never fun studying for these tests. It's, you do have to give up uh, a lot of your free time, especially if you're working full time as well. If you, if you are not working and if you have the situation where you can defer your employment by however long it takes, if you're living at home and you have support system, then by all means, you take advantage of it. If, if, you know, if it doesn't impact your future or your finances at all, mm -hmm. but for, you know, for most people, you have to work full time while mm -hmm. you're studying for these tests. You just don't have the luxury of, of being able to just take a break. You're not in school, you're not at work, you're just studying. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, if you're working nine to five, nine to six, you're going to have to take time out of your evening. Some people will wake up really early and they'll study in the mornings. I couldn't do that. I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. So it's rough because it means that instead of going hanging out, hanging out with friends or sitting down and watching a movie or reading a book or however, however you like to um, relax after work, instead you have to just continue your day by studying. But so that's why I think it's really important to pace yourself. Mm -hmm. If I was in the office um, and work at six, then I would study until 7 30 and then I would go home and then that would be that if I was working from home that day I would probably study until 8 p.m mm -hmm. um, and then that would be that I needed to have those two to three hours every every night during the week to just decompress because otherwise I knew that I was going to burn out and I wouldn't be able to do all four exams mm -hmm. and especially also the weekends I didn't I never studied I very rarely studied on Friday nights and I very rarely studied on Saturdays it was really important to me to have that time to not look at the exam and also because if you're studying constantly your brain is just it's going to overload it's going to you know you're not going to be able to retain the information very well because you're just trying to cram everything in it's like I don't know if you have you have a, a bag and you're just trying to cram in blankets at some point you're not going to be able to to get all. more in there yeah I think those are really really great tips because a lot of people not a lot of people get to study um, before they start working full time. Just a few, because I it worked out for me because I um, I I put in my application for my CPA exam before graduation because um, I already had the 150 credit, so I was able to qualify to start sitting during that four month period before I started working. So I was able to fit it all in. But I feel like the majority of the population will study a part before they start working, and then some of it while they are working full time. And it's really important that you're pacing yourself. You're just managing your time and just managing your energy effectively so that way you could study for the long haul and not burning yourself out. So I think that's that's really good, good tip to share. Did you reward yourself at all? Like when you passed a section or after the exam or after you got all ex exams passed and, and what did that reward process look like for you? I mean, after I got my final score back for the fourth exam, uh, my fiance had gotten into medical school around the same time. Mm -hmm. So we definitely, we did like a, a joint party in our apartment and had a, a lot of fun with that, with all of our friends to celebrate. That's great. Congrats again. Uh, any parting words, uh, uh, thoughts of encouragement for people who are currently studying, who are probably studying full time or maybe have taken a section and failed and are studying for a section, any just encouraging words that you can share? Just take your time. Honestly, I, I understand why there is this big push to get them done as soon as you can because life just isn't very fun when you're studying and especially when you're also working and you just want to get over it as soon as you can if you find that you are failing exams because you're trying to rush through them you're going to end up studying overall longer because of the mm -hmm. amount of times that you have to retake the tests than if you just sat down and took your time I probably averaged about it depending on the exam but when I was studying full time I did about 1 to 2 months for each exam mm -hmm. and then when I was working full time it took me about 4 months to get through to get through one and I studied for a year and a half it wasn't fun there were times where I wanted to quit and that I there were times where I was miserable or I just wanted to take a break and when that happened I did I took a break I said okay you know what for the next for the rest of the week, I'm not going to study. I'm just going to let myself 
let loose and and not even look at the textbook. But I did that because I knew that once the next week came around, I would be I had the motivation to immediately go back, get back to it. So you need to know yourself. If you think you're the type of person where if you take a break for three days, then your routine is broken and you're going to have a very difficult time getting back to it, then don't do it. You know, try to stick to the path. It's very important to just know how you function and, and know how how you just know yourself and how you go with exams, how you need to study, how you learn the best, how routines work with you and try to adapt your style to what works best. Yeah, no, I echo that as well. And just like you said earlier, when we started, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. Like just take the time, study and just pace yourself so that way you can have the energy and the stamina to just go the long haul. Because like if you try to rush it, you might not do so well and then you have to study more. Mm -hmm. So it's like just if it's going to take you four months to like get through one section, just take the four months you need to get through that section and know that once you're done with that, you can be done and you can move on to something else. I think that's a really good tips. And now you're done. You you have your CPA exam and you're working full time and you're, you are you have the CPA behind you and you can now have all the time to like focus on your career and just like um, just live your life, right? And hang out with your friends and do things that you enjoy outside of studying. How does it feel to have the CPA exam like behind you? And more importantly, how does it feel to be an Elijah Watts Sales Awards winner? Honestly, having the Elijah Watts Sales Award, like it's great. I definitely think of it as a little official stamp on my resume that I probably studied a bit too hard, <laughs> but it means that I'm a hard worker and that I know mm -hmm. my stuff. And that even if I, you know, seven years down the line, if I forget everything in the exams, you know, I'm not a tax accountant. I'm not going to remember mm -hmm. anything about tax. Having this award is just sort of proof that I'm able to learn and that I'm able to, um, to get to the, I'm able to sit down and learn something and be able to regurgitate it back up, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, but honestly, the, it's kind of, uh, the cherry on top. It's not really, I don't really think of it as that, as that big of a deal. It's really just having the exams done just by themselves is what's really important to me. Yeah. yeah. Done. I never had to do it again. Right. Exactly. Once you're done, you're done for life. And and no, that's, that's, that's really true. Thank you so much for chatting with me. It was great, like hearing your story. And I, I hope this story encouraged a lot of people as they're on their journey, taking the CPA exam and just knowing that it is a marathon, not a sprint. And you can just take the time you need, pace yourself. And people have passed the exam before you and a lot of people have done it and I think that you can do it as well just with the right amount of time the right amount of studying and just preparation can get you to that end point and good luck everyone with your studying and I'll see you in my next video thank you so much